Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The market is headed to the moon on FC25. Player prices are going up all over the place as it's finally nice to see some price rises on this market. Now, the next question is, as we head into this week, especially this weekend, are prices going to continue to keep going up? We're going to talk about that. This might be the most important market information video of the week as we take a look a little bit ahead in this week, but also with how the market moved yesterday. Could it continue moving today? When do we need to think about selling? We're going to answer a lot of those questions in the video today. Of course, we have leaks to look at as well for today's content on Tuesday and Champions League action that might impact some prices on this game as well. If you're excited for the video, drop a thumbs up on it and subscribe if you're new. Now, I would love to go into FC 25 at the moment as I'm sitting here in the menus, but PlayStation servers are down. I can't even get into the game. They've been down for like three hours, but the web app and the companion app, since it's a PlayStation issue, obviously, are still working. With that, let's go through yesterday's content from Monday, which won't take very long because there was not a whole lot. We had a player SBC in the name of Giovanni Lo Celso. He's cheap. He's mid, and maybe he's worth doing if you're trying to stack up on live cards that maybe have a chance to upgrade. Maybe Batiste does insane down the line, and he gets some upgrades and becomes a worthwhile card, maybe through evolutions as well. He is only 85 rated. Now, this SBC doesn't, like, you know, strike me as somebody that's really an insane card, to be honest, but he's only 85 rated, and he's an 84 and 85 rated squad. He does have some nice play styles. It's, it's worth mentioning. Finesse, incisive, long ball, and technical. He's lacking the weak foot. He's got a three Three-star weak foot, and he has playmaker, shadow striker, and half winger plus in terms of the roles for that Geo Celso. So not bad, but not like a wild wow type of SBC, just kind of there. We also had the 77 double release yesterday, this time unlimited repeatable, which actually, guys... I am not going to recommend the 77 double SBC. A little bit of a spoiler from the second channel video that we put on for the RTG episode yesterday, but... The actual gold upgrades, I think, are better than this. You don't have to worry about rare golds either. I know there's a rating guarantee with this one, but I'm going to go for the gold upgrades being better than these 77 doubles. We did a bit of a test comparison on the TFATG yesterday. If you want to check that out, I'll link that above. But uh, yeah, we do have those that are unlimited, repeatable. A lot of downvotes, as you can see here. It's also just so early in the year that it feels weird to be putting a lot of coins and even stuff from your club into those types of SBCs, but they're fun to just try a couple of for sure. Now, the other part of yesterday's content that was really just more confusing than anything else was the new rush mode, or should I say the updated rush mode. Guys, it's still the welcome to rush event that is inside of rush right now, one of the two events that we have there, but they changed the requirements. It used to be max 79 overall. Now it is max 88. It's actually the same requirements that were in rush when we were getting on the web app for the first time. That was the event that was in rush, this exact same event right here so ea changed it back to what it was before really random now there are some good things about this you can actually do evolutions inside of rush which is really nice to get those games played have a bit more fun with those cards i think doing evos and rush is a really good idea you can also use tradable cards in this if that's something that you're interested in too it's out for nine more days it's just really random though number one that this was updated not at the content drop time at just any random time it feels like ea could update add or change a rush mode we've already had that happen multiple times and also just again the fact that it's happening at random times and just at random moments I feel like this should be a part of the content drop each day now maybe there's some issues with the coding and EA's figuring it out again I'll give them at least a little bit of um, you know leeway here because a brand new mode and ultimate team I'm sure they're figuring out a lot of things as well um, but this was just completely random yesterday I just don't like how it feels like EA can change something like that especially an integral part of a gameplay mode that's something that we really don't see before it's not like they're automatically, it would be the equivalent of them changing completely one of the friendly modes in friendlies that was like, you know, a objective or we were playing a cup mode and they all of a sudden change the friendly mode and the requirements they get into it. That's kind of what this is, except it's in rush. So a little bit of a weird one yesterday with that, but it's a W if you're doing evolutions. All, I would say, guys, if you're playing rush right now, play the center back mode. You get a lot of rush points from that, especially because of the blocks. They're really, really easy to complete. So just do play with friends, find one other person or a couple others, go into that mode. And I literally played on stream yesterday for an hour, knocked out the games I need to knock out, got all the packs and the objectives 
that's in the second channel as well. So Rush is actually a pretty quick and easy complete with that center back mode. I think that was the most fun too, just because it was so random. But that's how this felt too, really random with how they did that. Now, we got to talk about the market, guys. That's the big conversation piece for today, as yesterday's content was really mid, right? So what happened? Yesterday morning, the market was rising like crazy. Of course, we're after the big Sunday rise. We started with that big rise on Sunday, went from 81 points on the index up to 87. Yesterday, we went up even further from 87 points on the index all the way to 90. And then just basically about every single day, as you can see here, we have this little dip. This happened uh, yesterday on Sunday as well. You have a little dip at the content drop, preview packs, a couple of other packs in the store probably. There were 50K packs that were refreshed yesterday in the store. Not as much, of course, demand for those to be opened. So it just a tiny bit of a market drop, but you don't even like notice, to be honest. For most of the market, prices just went flying straight back up after that, and the market at 91 points. It's down a little bit right now, but I have to imagine that that is due to people not being able to get on PlayStation. That's a huge portion of the console user base that is not able to get on the game and play games at the moment. And that's probably leading some people to just not be on the game or even sell a couple of cards from their team since they're not able to play at the moment. There also is, and I forgot about this, but we were talking about it in the stream yesterday, one of the reasons why the market's probably going up a lot, especially on some of these top tier cards, Fede Valverde is almost 500,000 coins. That's a huge rise from 380K that he was on Friday. The pro ladder, uh, I think, begins. And people were trying to get into Division Three to get that FC Pro objective and to claim that qualifier aspect of the menus. I'm obviously not there yet. I'm in Division Five. Don't plan on being there. But that was probably some extra gameplay demand that moved, especially some of the top tier cards, up a lot. Now, let's take a look at some of these cards that everybody is continuing to buy for teams that you're seeing prices rise on. There were some nuts rises yesterday. Sam Kerr, literally just yesterday alone, went from 110,000 coins to 130K, where she is right now. Rafael Leao's 465. Teo Hernandez is 450. That's up like 50,000 coins. Sophia Smith is up to 325. So you have a lot of prices. Bonmati is 289. That's a big rise for her as well. And Bape's 4.1. You're having a lot of this mid to top tier go up. See a lot of green in here. Now there is some cards that are showing in the red here, but they're, most of them are actually up as well. Chiesa is 150,000 coins. What did his graph do yesterday? He started at 139 and went all the way to 153. So you have most of the market rising, which is a good thing. And it is kind of what we expected, of course, as we were looking for prices to rise with a lot of gameplay demand, right? Rivals and champs this week, champs qualifiers in particular. And then of course you have less supply as well. So without a lot of store packs, even SBC packs, and of course rewards being open tradable yesterday on Monday, you still have a lot of demand for teams and you have prices going up a lot now what's up even more than the gold cards take a look at this guys this is the index gold right or index 100 take a look at the index icons and heroes this index was at 106 points it is now up to 116 and just on a crazy pace of a rise and as you guys know icon prices have absolutely exploded. Hero prices have absolutely exploded as well. I mean, this Gerd Muller was like 900K on the weekend. He's now 1.2 million coins. Even on the, some of the lower tier icons, like Ribery, that's not a lower tier one, but Cannavaro is 400 and how much? 460,000 coins. He was down at 380, up 100,000 coins in just a couple of days. The icon market, I think percentage wise, is up a lot more from where it was. Um, and I think that's just because people are maybe moving on from some of the gold cards, or maybe they want a bit of a safer investment than some of these gold cards. I really feel like some of these prices are for the golds. I know they're not up a crazy amount, but golds just feel kind of. I don't know. They just feel a little bit um, worrisome for me. They just feel very supply at times, especially with rewards. So I think we're going to be very careful with golds as we head on throughout the week. But I think we should also be careful with icons as well, even though they're one of my favorite things to trade right now. Yesterday, I flipped another Buffon from 800,000 coins to 870. Just made a nice 26,000 coin flip out of that. And that was a good one. I still have the VVD. Uh, so I just relisted there for a lazy sale. Hopefully get a crazy, crazy sale on that one. But that's one that I'm holding out for right now because he just keeps rising in price as well. But a lot of people are trading with the icons and heroes and 
And honestly, it's a great place to be because there's a lot of people buying those cards for pretty crazy prices, to be honest. And that's why trading with them is pretty good. Now, I got to shout Road to the Knockouts as well because some of these cards even went up yesterday. Frempong was 700K. He's down just a little bit. Romero is up some. Cherokee is up some. Some of these cards that maybe even have games today like DeMarco, I think actually could be potential investments. I wanted to shout this out. If you're looking for something to buy just to base off a little bit of hype today, you could look at a DeMarco. They're playing uh, Red Star, and that's a very, very heavy favorited game for Inter. They could be winning today. That would be their first win, so it wouldn't be him locking in an upgrade. It would just be moving forward in the path of both the score one and four plus games, four games, and also win three, so you're watching for that one. A couple other games you'd be looking for today too would be, I think, what, Frimpong for Leverkusen, PSV has Noah Lang, a couple more players. Manchester City has Doku, of course. So maybe you could invest there. I think DeMarco would be the best one, but if he's going to rise into content today, it would probably just be based off of hype, and he's already up. He was 116 yesterday, peaked at 124. So if you can get this in the one teens, maybe there's a chance for that. But if we do get pack supply today, I think that he would drop down. Now, overall, the market, I think, today on Tuesday is still going to be pretty safe. And maybe even tomorrow into Wednesday as well. The question comes with how high is too high when it comes to this market. As, as player prices just continue to go up and you look at these things and you're like, man, Nate, sure, I know the gold cards seem a little bit unsteady at this point. And some of them are moving nice and others are not. What about the gold market that you're a little bit cautious about? Guys, I think by the time we get to Friday, we have to be out of these gold cards. We have to be because not only do we have insane supply coming on Friday with maybe some actual promo packs, if EA drops promo packs for the Road to the Knockout Team 2 differently than they did Team 1, but we have weekend league rewards. And remember all those insane packs that everybody's going to be grinding for for weekend league rewards? Yeah, those are all tradable and those are going, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are tradable and they're going to impact the market. If squad battle rewards makes cards like Saliba and Bonmati and Nico Williams and other, like even Sam Kerr, Phil Foden has 88 rated cards. If squad battle rewards makes these card prices drop on Sunday yesterday, 119 down to 112, went back up for Foden. There's better examples than him. Neymar dropped, right? If squad battle rewards can do that, imagine what the insane packs from foot champs are going to do so i don't know what day is the peak this week it's going to depend on a variety of different things it's going to depend on the leaks for team two of road to the knockout other sbcs that could potentially leak that we're going to be talking about in the video today i think by the time we get to wednesday we'll know if the peak is today or if the peak's going to be friday after division rivals rewards or like thursday during that whole situation remember last week thursday made the rewards market pop up a bit so all I would say is get your games in that you need to get in and maybe start to think about selling some of the gold cards, especially if they're on the lower rating on the lower tier. Like some of the 30, 40,000 coin cards, I know some of the cheap cards have even gone back up. Uh, like I think Yikeres went up yesterday. He's like 3,000 coins. And like Javi Simons, obviously Guihara went up a bunch because she's extinct and there's a lot of hype there, but Todibo is up some. Um, let's see who else Robertson has an 85 rated just starter left back Gakpo is up Sadio Mane is up Openda is up this is a perfect example of a card you'd want to sell Openda 34,000 coins yesterday he started the day at 30k went up to 36 that's a card that you need to sell before this weekend because the packs that are going to be released in rewards are going to absolutely destroy that card so that's kind of my message for the market this week guys I I think we have to be careful with the gold cards, especially heading into the weekend. I think we need to be careful with everything, even the icons and heroes, because they've been inflated a real ton. They need to be, we need to be careful with those. I think we just got to get out before Friday. Now, the exact timing is going to depend, especially if you got games to play, get those games in. But before Friday, we got to get those out. And it's going to make, I think, trading, like we saw yesterday too, just from a trading perspective, it's going to make it a little bit tougher this week as well. Uh, sure, there were some opportunities to flip yesterday with some of these cards and some of the informs, some of the out of packs players, and especially heroes and icons still right now in this game are probably the best place to be flipping and trading. Like Harry Cool yesterday, he's 300,000 coins again. That's that's probably a buy. He went from 300K, he goes up to like 330. It's not a big flip, but it's some easy quick coins when he goes there multiple times a day that you could pick him up and flip him. 
these are still going to be your best trades, but trading itself is going to be harder at the moment. Right now, what you maybe want to do is just make sure for the team of the week two that's going to be going out of packs tomorrow on Wednesday, you want to make sure that you're just stocking a couple of the discard guys in here, right? We'll click on team of the week two, and you see, of course, the Evander. I like him. A lot of people are investing in Jackson from Chelsea. I think you need this one at like 12,000 coins. That's my... Um, price that I would like to buy for him. I think Alderweireld's a good one. I think Mukoko is a good one. And I think Gabia from Inter um, Milan, sorry, AC Milan, sorry, is a good investment there as well as a discard in form. Don't like put a ton of coins into that because those are investments that you're probably going to have to hold for a while before you see them go up. But I think those are some buys that you can make right now to pass the time and still make some long-term games off of, even though right now the trading and the flipping is not hitting as good as it could potentially be. So that's kind of the state of the market at the moment. I really wanted to have that discussion with you guys because I know it's such a big point right now we're going to of course follow the market for the rest of the week every single day we'll see if there's panic we'll see if there's news that comes out that makes some prices adjust but i just think we got to be careful and maybe get some of those cards out of our teams by the time we get to friday now again on the exact timing it's going to depend i want to look at this harry kewell right now is he actually sitting at 300k 304 304 how many do we have to like 337 i sold him at 337 earlier there's a lot of overnights wow a lot of people are trading with harry q at like 330 so hmm do i want to make 10k on this card or is it worth not worth it i don't know we'll probably hold off on that one for now and maybe try to spend our 800k in a different area for a late night icon flip early into today on tuesday let's talk about tuesday though today um actually as we do that we have this news from ea which may be coming today but it's probably gonna be coming in the next couple of days a title update which actually has really good information related to the menus now this is only for pc guys again mentioned in the tweet here it says it will be available soon for pc but this means that it should should be coming to xbox and playstation the consoles very soon this is the biggest one right here address the following issue issues sometimes button inputs were not being registered when performing actions in the menus bring that to the console and this these menus will be way better back to normal i guess is what we should really think of them as Hopefully that's coming to consoles like this week or early next week because usually the console part is delayed either a couple days or maybe a week depending on the way they used to do title updates last year. It just depends, but that's something we're looking forward to and uh, you guys on PC will have that update, they say, in the, the near future. We'll see. That's very EA terminology, but that is a good update, man. We're very excited for that because that should make the menus feel a whole lot better back to normal and what they should be. I wanted to mention that because that is obviously some big news. Now, I want to talk about Tuesday content today as well. Actually, looking back to what we had last Tuesday, you might have forgotten about it because I almost did. The 82 triple was released last Tuesday. W upgrade SBC. I know it's got a lot of downvotes, but this week, if they drop this again, it was literally just an 83 rated squad. No frills, no inform, nothing difficult about it. An 83 squad, even if you do a couple of 77 twos or some gold upgrades, is a piece of cake to get done, especially with duplicate storage. And that is an SBC that is worth doing, especially during a Road to the Knockouts promo right now, where we have cards and packs that, you know, you could maybe hit big or a team of the week, of course. So that is 100% worth doing. Watch out for another upgrade pack SBC. I don't think there's anything new that has been released in the code. So hopefully... They just re-released this one with the same requirements because they did that with the 77 double yesterday as well. Maybe they make it like two times repeatable though or three times repeatable. We'd be down for that. Uh, would it make fodder move? I doubt it. Maybe 84s would move a little bit if they make it multiple times repeatable. That'd be the only thing that could potentially go up on the game today if they were to do that. Maybe 85 is a little bit too, but I doubt it for an 83 rated squad. But we would be there for that one. Now, the other thing I want to talk about today is UEFA marquee matchups. We did not see it yesterday, but in the past, EA has also dropped this SBC on Tuesdays because that is the actual day where you have the Champions League games. Kind of like we already mentioned, you know, you've got some games today. I mean, Arsenal, PSG, Leverkusen, Milan, those are some big teams playing against each other. I could also see EA doing, well, this is usually what they do, one SBC from the Tuesday, one from the Wednesday uh, of that game week of Champions League. Most of the time, these are Champions League-specific SBCs. I could see them doing Leipzig and Juventus, Villa, Bayern Munich, 
maybe Atleti and ben, uh, Benfica, and then one of the games from Tuesdays. They could do that. If we're going to get a marquee matchups, today's also uh, potential for that as well. I looked back to last year in FC24, and the first one was released on October 23rd, so it was definitely not like around this time, but this is a typical type of SBC that would you would think that would be released during a Champions League specific promo. So we'll see if they do it or not. And you know, it's probably going to give us some decent packs. Again, it's just like a regular marquee matchups where it, it is some packs that are worth grinding and crafting, not really necessarily investing for unless there's leaks ahead of time so that you know what you're investing in kind of thing. But like marquee matchups gives you a chance at some good tradable pack pulls, but it doesn't really like destroy the market. It just makes a little bit of a dip. And I think if we had a UEFA marquee matchups, unless people started panic selling and saying, oh my gosh, like if the packs were insane, maybe it would cause a market drop. But to be completely honest, I don't think this is going to impact the market a ton as long as there's not a whole lot of other content or hype alongside of it that would make people think prices were going to drop. It would just supply the lower tier. So those lower rated cards that we want to be careful with right now anyway, those would just drop even further if we had a marquee matchups. SBC. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is Team of the Week leaks. This is a prediction, guys. I think some people are taking this as a leak. He says prediction. Who did I forget to mention in my prediction? Now, of course, we're going to probably see actual Team of the Week leaks today on Tuesday, most likely because that is almost always the day we see leaks. Even early on Tuesdays, we get Team of the Week leaks. We're looking for Mickey Vandeman, guys. You know who it is. Of course, after that run that he had, the assist that he provided. This guy's got Kulusevski in the prediction. Okay. Lautaro Martinez, Teo Hernandez. I don't know if Teo's going to get another inform. That's a really short turnaround from his first um, inform that he had in Team of the Week 1. Crazy if he had had Team of the Week 3. I don't know if EA is going to do that. But if you are somebody who invested in Mickey Vandeven, I honestly think he was 63K yesterday and he's 60K right now. If Mickey Vandeven is leaked, this could be the beginning of a good sell time for any of these cards. If you invested in Cole Palmer, if you invested in Martinez or Teo Hernandez, that's the sort of investment that you're going to be watching out for today. If you invested in those, you're going to be watching out for the leaks. Cole Palmer's 8.5K. He was down to like 7,500 coins. He was a good investment there. I could see Cole Palmer jumping back up to maybe like 9 since there was so much hype for him. He's also potentially going to be player of the month for Premier League, but that voting is not out yet, and it probably won't be for a hot minute. So there's probably not a whole lot to worry about there with this version of this card, but He's probably going to rise a bit if he is leaked. That's one of the things I wanted to mention today as a potential leak for Team of the Week. Could be moving the market a bit if you want to get invested there. And if, like, let's say Kulusevski gets leaked for Team of the Week, that's going to cause some crazy panic selling on a guy like Vandevin because that would mean that EA has chose Kulusevski instead of Vandevin. So we're starting to get to that sell in the hype window if you invested in out-of-packs Team of the Week cards uh, for some of these players Team of the Week 3 featured. Now, I want to talk about Player of the Months because... There's a couple tweets here or there, but this is just setting the stage with some, I don't know, info, I guess, but just kind of setting the stage for what could be coming later this week, Friday at the earliest, maybe next week. Voting is closed for Liga F and La Liga. And once the leaks and information in the news start popping about who has won La Liga Player of the Month, it's going to pop off, okay? Either it's Mbappe and it's going to be a disgustingly crazy SBC or it's going to be Lamina Mall with arguably one of the most hyped SBCs of probably the first half of this year on this game. Pre-team of the year, this Lamina Mall early player of the month would be so hyped. So many people would want to do that SBC, myself included. If EA gave them the right boost, even if they made it a bit expensive, this could be insane, right? It comes down to these two guys, maybe Anaki Williams as well. He had a lot of assists and not as many goals. Uh, this is saying Lamina Mall had two assists, one goal. Lamina Mall had, I believe, three goals and two assists, according to EA's website themselves. So I'm just showing you guys this tweet because it was tweeted yesterday, and there's just going to be so much hype whenever it is leaked of who wins this. This is not an official leak. It's just the voting is closed. I wanted to show you guys this. The voting is closed for Liga F as well. So we're awaiting the news of who has won. And since the voting was probably closed either yesterday or on Sunday, I think La Liga Play of the Month used to come out on Fridays last year. It could happen again. They come out on Fridays. If we would get either of those two this Friday, you could see leaks as early as today or tomorrow, and that would make some things move. I will say this, guys. If Mbappe is leaked, 
High rated fodder, 88s, 89s, and 90s, aka 90s being Harry Kane because he's the only 90 rated fodder card, maybe Kevin De Bruyne, but those cards would go up in value. If Mbappe were to win, people would start investing in those. And if we don't have any investments and you just want to start investing in high rated fodder, I don't love the price of 88s. I'll be honest, but 89s and 90s, if you get 89s at like 21K and a Harry Kane at like low 30s, you could start picking up a few of those for your club. Um, I'd have to go back and double check what the prices of 89s were last year. 89, we think of Casemiro, right? Casemiro 89 last year. How much was he in the early game stage? He was like 20, 19 to 20,000 coins and then rose up to 40. That's disgusting. I don't know if that's going to happen again. That's that might have been for an Mbappe play. No, that was too early, right? I, I'd have to go back and look. Usually, this the spike happens on fodder for some sort of icon SBC, like the first icon or hero upgrade. If they come kind of in uh, sequence with each other, that's when you see the huge fodder spike. So I think it's maybe a little early to still invest in this, but you could start, if you want a long-term investment, start chipping away at some of those 89 rateds in the low 20K range because there'll be investments at some point. Um, it's really just trying to time it when we have some supply, a day where we have some pack supply where you can stock up on a few of those. Let's go back to that Casemiro just really quick. What was the date on that? October 10th, uh, he started to rise up. He kind of went up at the beginning of October, rose or went down a little bit the Saturday of October 7th. So basically like this upcoming weekend last year was a low point for fodder before it absolutely exploded. You know, there's going to be people investing. So if you wait, want to wait on it a little bit, I think that's fine. But I also just wanted to mention this and what is going on there because there's a lot of people excited for this. And if we get official leaks, yeah, that's going to make prices absolutely pop off. So hopefully this game is back up and running on PlayStation today. I would imagine so because PlayStation servers are usually not down that long. But that's going to be the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Have a great Tuesday. And I will see you guys on the second channel if you want to check that video out there. Also, I will see you in the stream today. It's been made for the count. Have a great one. Peace.